the airway starts at the nose and the mouth and it goes down to the lungs and somewhere down here is a rigid tube, the trachea and that doesn't collapse but between that and the beginning of the airway there's tissue that's very floppy and that can collapse and it's there and floppy so that you can speak and that's important because communication through speech is what enabled human beings to evolve so well but the problem is when you go to sleep and you don't maintain your airway because you're not aware of it so much it can collapse and because this tube has sort of a, a negative pressure because as you try to breathe in through your lungs you create a negative pressure to suck the air in it can also suck the airway closed and so as you go to sleep and everything relaxes the tongue and the jaw go back and you can see this airway gets more and more narrow now if it gets too narrow people don't get enough oxygen and then their oxygen level goes down below to a certain level where there's alarms that get set off in the brain and there's a little um, chemo receptors in the neck in the carotid bodies in the neck and those set off little alarms that go um, you better wake up and breathe because you're gonna die so people then wake up and they wake up they get a surge of adrenaline it wakes them up they get more muscle tone and they start to breathe again because the airway opens now if this airway closes completely for more than 10 seconds that's called an apnea that's an event and we count those number of events that happen throughout the night if it closes part the way so people are just breathing with a lot of effort and not much air is traveling the oxygen level can still drop and that's called a hypopnea and those two things apneas and hypopneas are called events they're, they're challenges to the cardiovascular system because there isn't enough oxygen feeding the body and if you have more than five or five or more of those events per hour on average you consider to have sleep apnea now if you said well is there a way to stop this relaxation and stopping the muscles from dropping back and the tongue from closing off the airway and pushing the soft palate against the airway well there are there's different things if we pump air through the nose or through the nose and the mouth that's a breathing machine called a CPAP and you can see that pumping the air will push the mandible forwards a little push the soft palate away from the pharynx and now we can breathe we've got an airway so the airway can be supported by by a pumping air down through the nose and the mouth or one or both and by doing that you push the tongue and the soft palate away from the posterior pharyngeal wall and you maintain an airway now that's an, a pneumatic kind of splint and that's what uh, breathing machines and the medical uh, community believe is one of the best conservative choices